untouchable. That's how this place has always felt. I can remember seeing TV commercials for it when I was a child. They called it the world's premier fishing destination. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe it's luck, but somehow we find ourselves invited to this one-of-a-kind location. And for the next four days, we'll be trolling baits, casting lures, and experiencing one of the most unique trips I've ever heard of. While the ultimate goal remains catching something monstrous that we've never caught before, there is so much more to this video than just fishing. Welcome to Tropic Star Lodge. What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. I'm here with two of my favorite people in the world. Aww. We're about to hop on the smallest plane I've ever hopped on in my entire life. And we're headed to Tropic Star Lodge to do some epic fishing in Panama. We'll see you guys there. Are you ready, dude? I'm so stoked. Ryan <laughs> Mori? That's me. Ready? <laughs> wow. Can't see anyone's face, but <laughs> <laughs> it is hot on this thing, man. We are moving. Should be like a 55-minute ride, and then we will be at Tropic Star. That was like the nicest plane ride I've ever been on. It was a tiny, teensy, tiny little plane. Good pilot, you know what I mean? So now we are on a dirt road, on a truck, and we're all loaded up. We're headed to a boat to bring us to the lot. So we got all modes of transport to get us where we need to go. But a big rainstorm building right there. Might get absolutely clobbered by that. This is a pretty cool experience so far. Floating on up. You guys are so cute. Well guys, I think we made it. Feels good to be here and we didn't even get rained on. I think that's a good sign. Going to places where like it's a, a destination. Yeah. Like, you actually have to like work to get there. It's it's cool. Well, we didn't do much work. I think the Tropic oh. Star staff did all the work for us. <laughs> Many people come here to catch, you know, big tuna, big marlin. I came here to catch one of these guys, big Cubera snapper, one of the baddest fish in the ocean. And then you took a bite. Guys, finally, welcome to Tropic Star. Yeah, we are. We want to make sure that this is one of the best holidays, if not the best holiday you guys have ever had. Now I expected this to be an awesome location, but I had no clue what we were in for. This lodge is much more like a self-sustaining little community. It's located in the middle of a giant rainforest, actually called the Darien Jungle. And this lodge has been serving fishermen and adventurers alike for over 60 years. But we'll touch a little bit more on the location and the history later in the video. We spent our afternoon getting associated with the lodge, getting associated with what we were going to be doing over the next couple days, and then it was time. It was time for something I was super excited about and had heard so many great stories about. The food here is absolutely to die for. In our first meal, we were having a big buffet with all the rest of the groups over at the pool. And y'all, I didn't do a lot of filming, but let me tell you, this food was phenomenal. So I completely forgot to film dinner, but everyone was cleaning their plates. I'll show you guys another meal on this trip, I promise, but the food is absolutely great. It's like a five-star chef here. And now we got a wonderful little dessert. It's like a little lemon pastry. With like a little toasted marshmallow on top, or what is going on? It's like a cheesecake? Mm -hmm. Good morning, y'all. It is a beautiful morning here in Panama. We are loading up the boat, getting ready. This should shape up to be some epic fishing, man. 
Weather looks good. I'm glad that it's a little overcast. It's gonna be a little bit better for top water action and a little bit better for our skin. You Don't know, get super fried on day one. Everyone else is on my boat, so they're waiting on me. I'm gonna grab my stuff and we're gonna go fishing. Adios! So when you get on your boat in the morning, your captain asks you, kind of what do you want to target? What are you looking for? Now, you already know what's going to be in season and what's not going to be on, in season based on what the staff tells you. So I told our captain, our goal, first off, is I really want to catch a Cubera snapper. Secondary, we want to catch some rooster fish and then anything else. This time of year, this place isn't really known for catching uh, big marlin, even though they are here all year round. Primarily, if you want to catch like the big marlin, Island, giant Dorados, October, November, December, January. We're kind of in the off season for those. So we're doing what I like to do, throwing some big poppers, trolling some big full of bonitas, things like that. And it's getting really loud. So I'll see you guys on the fishing grounds. As we made our way out, our captain decided to stop at a spot to try and get some bait. Now, his first move wasn't to actually catch the bait. He pulled up to this group of locals in these little dugout canoes that I did not expect to run into. They literally were catching blue runners, bonitas, um, little cigar minnows, and keeping some live and some dead in their canoes. It was such a cool sight to see. This is crazy. <laughs> See these guys out here, dugout canoes. Families have probably been doing that for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Catching some blue runners, hooking up the captain and the mate with some blue runners that we are gonna get to use for bait. This is pretty darn cool, man. One of the more interesting things is how these guys get water into their canoe and out of their canoe. Just their hands and feet, no need for a cup or a bucket or a pump or anything. <laughs> Next, the mate and I put out a couple rigs to try and catch a couple small bonitas that could work really well as bait. We didn't actually run into bonitas, but we did run into a couple other species. All right, we got us our first fish of the day. Hopefully gonna be a good bait. He's on a little little feather, just trolling it. I felt him coming up and whacking it. Look, he's got a mackerel right there. Come see our mackerel on the planter. I'm hooked up to like a little bonita or something like that. That's what it feels like. So this is what they call a Sierra mackerel here. I'm not sure if they're actually a different species from our Spanish that we get in the Atlantic because they do get quite a bit bigger. They get like 15 to 17 pounds from what I've seen, but they look pretty much exactly the same as the Spanish mackerel. Those beautiful spots, they eat really good raw and they're a little bit slimy. They leave some funky scales on you. But we're gonna throw these in the box for some fresh sashimi. We're gonna get back to fish and catch some bait. We spent another couple minutes trying to catch some bonitas, but to no avail. So we continued moving on and it was time to get fishing. So we told our captain today, one of the primary objectives is we wanna catch a big fish on a popper. So we are throwing these giant poppers. This one, for instance, is a FCL Ebby Pop. We are casting these up against some giant rock ledges, giant structures where fish like Cubera snapper, rooster fish, bluefin trevally might be hiding. So this is kind of, I don't wanna say intense, but it's definitely not sitting back and waiting for a bite. You're actively fishing, and that's why I like it. It keeps me hands-on, keeps my ADHD working. And uh, I'm not a newbie to popping, but I've just been really doing it for about a year now. Had a couple trips to Panama, done a little bit of time. It's a whole new sport that I think is probably one of the more fun types of fishing because you'll just have a giant fish come up behind your giant lure and just cream it on top and you watch the whole thing happen. I will never get over how epic 
spots like this look how just fishy and crazy growing up in florida with flat land everywhere to be fishing on the edge of these giant islands rock outcroppings which is mean you know there's mean fish living here you just got to get lucky enough to have one come up and eat your bait as we got to our second spot i saw a massive head come out of the water right behind my popper oh 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 rooster 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 Big rooster came up on me all. I don't really have the ideal setup for him, but he, uh, because you just want to be able to keep moving it fast and moving it fast. Came up, waked on it, swiped at it, then didn't come back. So guys, I want to introduce you to the man that's helping make these trips happen. This is Mr. Nate Matthews. Hey guys, nice to meet you. My name's Nate. I'm the editor in chief of Saltwater Sportsman Magazine. And we're working with creators like Ryan. What we're doing here is we're bringing these guys on trips. Tropic Star, Panama, can't beat that. We've got a bunch of other stuff planned. Really excited to uh, not only have them helping us create content for our channels, but I mean, we want to help them create the best footage they can for you guys. Alrighty, we got Nate hooked up. First good bite of the day on the popper. We fished this spot in the kayaks. Did you? Two days ago, had a couple of runoffs on bait. I tell you, we can cover it a little faster on this bigger boat. <laughs> I'm sure you're excited to be on a boat today after four days on kayaks. A little more comfortable. <laughs> All around one. Gracias, senor. Nice jack. Yeah. Love that little spot on there. Gill plate. A little bit slimy on the fingers. <laughs> you guys see the difference? Our Atlantic jacks don't have this fat anal fin. They've evolved to be a little bit different every year. Well, it's not a rooster fish, it's not a cubero, but it'll do for the first fish of the day. Yeah. Let her go. Yeah, yeah. let her go. Pretty much. We're working this shoreline. And uh, we're switching up lures, just kind of trying to see what's going to get a bite, what's not going to get a bite. So I swapped to this stick bait, which I'll show you guys. This is made by Pelagic Warrior, but basically the reasoning that I wanted to switch to this is we got two pit guys working poppers in the back, which is going to cause a bunch of, bunch of commotion and make fish come up to the surface. But I wanted to just switch to something subsurface, just a different presentation. This just wobbles through the water very, very slowly and you know lazily. Come on, something whack to stick bait. Oh, that's sick. Bard snapper. Oh my God, that's sick. Came up and hammered the stick bait. Woo, we're gonna go to the back of the boat. Try, try not to fall in. Yeah, barred snapper. Throw it again, throw it again. One, two, three. That's a stud, too. Look at that. Beautiful snapper. That's beautiful, man. Check that out. That's my first barred snapper. That's a stud, man. Such a pretty fish. On a stick bait, too, man. You don't really expect to catch these on lures and he just came up and absolutely crushed the stick bait beautiful fish look at this crate it's like um it's interesting look at the mouth it's like a mixture of a snap it's like a mutton snapper and a sheep's head mixed together very very pretty fish stoked that's cool man checking checking another fish off the list first one ever Woo. muy bonita Woo. gracias senor <laughs> muy bien <laughs> yeah. 
So the lure fishing proved to be pretty slow on the first morning. So it was time for us to put out some live baits. They use this thing called a downrigger, which basically uses this big heavy weight to slowly troll a live bait near or around the bottom where a lot of fish are gonna be hanging out. The mate bridled this blue runner, which essentially uses a small needle to poke a small hole through the bait and then attach a hook with a tiny piece of floss. And it leaves the biggest gap in the hook and is one of the more effective ways of rigging up a bait for trolling. Once everything was in position, it didn't take long for us to get our first bite of the day. I don't know, but we're tight on something. Woo! Arling hooked up. He was so casual about it. So casual about it. I was like, you have a fish on, man? <laughs> Not like massive, but we're definitely, you know, it's big enough to eat a big old blue runner. Now it's fighting. Maybe a little jack-like. Cranking on them. Just had the rubber band go through. Oh, right there, pulled hook. So we pulled hook on that first fish, but that literally took, I don't know, like maybe five minutes to get a bite, which is crazy for how much we've been throwing lures and, you know, getting hit here and there, catching a fish here and there. Um, it's crazy what a live bait presented properly can do in the right situation. So fingers crossed. That fish didn't feel like it was a massive trophy or anything like that. I personally think it was a Jack Cravel. We didn't get a good look, um, but hopefully we get that big Cubera, big rooster, something that, uh, you know, you're not used to seeing every day in the United States. I'm gonna do a little messing around with my lighter setup while we're trolling around here. See if maybe I can raise like a rooster fish or something like that. I just got a smaller popper, this FCL. Ebby Papa's 150, 60 pound liter, a little bit lighter of a setup. My luck, something giant's gonna come up and just break my heart, but we will see. Oh! What was that? Something big blew up. There we go. I think we got a needlefish. Woo! Oh, we actually got a drag puller. Woo! No, I think it's a jack. Oh, it's a Sierra. Sierra. Tight on a fish, believe it or not. Just walking my way to the back of the boat right now. Came up and ate a lighter popper. Got a nicer one. Woo, look at that. That's a good nice That's one. a good looking one. Could have been the same fish, but uh, I had a nice blow up on the lighter popper and I kept working, I kept working it and took it under. Thought it was a needlefish for a second until it started ripping drag. Then it ended up being this nice Sierra mackerel. If you guys see, you know, we were talking about it. This would be a giant Spanish. And they get actually a decent amount bigger than this one. Last time I was in Panama, we made ceviche with these. So happy that we can uh, put some fish in the box, you know what I mean? Over the next few hours, fishing went pretty quiet. No real bites on the live baits, nor any bites on the lures. And to add insult to injury, the rainforest decided to do what it does best and start raining all over us. That wasn't going to stop me from fishing though. I still got up on the front every chance I had and casted poppers, stick baits, just tried a little bit of everything to just see if I could raise something interesting. I put one more Sierra mackerel in the boat that happened to come up on a popper. And then it was time to head in for the afternoon. I did, however, get invited to go fish on a panga later that afternoon as well once the rain cleared up. So I knew that today's opportunities were not over with. I noticed as I was walking by the cleaning table that there are a ton of cool looking dock pets. So I decided I was gonna stick my GoPro in the water and just see what I could see.
With the rainstorm finally clearing up, it was time to hop on a panga and try a quick afternoon session before dinner. All right, we are gonna go do a little panga fishing now because we're gluttons for punishment. Joining me on the panga is one of the guys in charge of fishing here at Tropic Star Lodge, that is Rex, awesome young man, as well as my good friend, Victor, who was on another boat during the day, but we both were able to hop on this panga together. All right, panga fishing. We're over at a little secret spot that Rex is bringing us to, said a Kubera lives here. He's raised him a couple times. We're gonna see if we can raise him real quick. Oh my god, that hit was aggressive, son. Oh my god. <laughs> he came up and hammered it now. Yeah, it's a jack. <laughs> I was so confused. Was there a rooster? No. Okay. Yeah. That's probably the biggest jack I got all trip. Oh. Man, I cannot get away from Jack Gravel wherever I go, y'all. They like to follow me, but you know, if it's gonna come up and crush a popper on top, aggressive like that, I don't mind it all that much. We're gonna take this guy, shoot him back in the water. Woo. We moved to a new area and we were casting around pretty much open water with a bunch of rocks directly below us. Then suddenly, what we had been looking for popped up underneath Rex's popper. A big red fish. Yeah? I just stopped it and he just hammered it? Yep. Yep. Literally just sitting there in the water. On the popper? Yep. On the popper. It's like a 10 pound of it still. It's Let's go. Ah, ha, ha, woo! Muy bien. Rex got himself a Kubera. <laughs> On the popper. I love that popper delta. Right? Muy bien? Yep. Muy bien? Si? 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 grab my rod. Yep, I got it. Nice. There he is. Oh! oh. Woo! Yeah, it did. Right, came out to one of my favorite little Cubera holes. Got this nice one on the uh, on the popper. Gave me a little tug. <laughs> yeah, look at those teeth. Go on, open up for us. Open up. Ooh. Chompers. Yeah, look at that, bro. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. That's what we came out here for. Oh. Nice work, brother. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> the sun started getting lower and we headed in for the evening. And let me tell you what, y'all. This lodge is definitely known for, you know, an extravagant vacation, crazy marlin fishing, but they can do a little bit of everything here. Big Adventures actually sponsored a couple guys to come out here well before we did. And they did a very rustic trip. They spent time fishing out of these bonafide kayaks and they targeted all of the same species we were targeting, but they camped in the jungle and they fished from kayaks exclusively. So for more information on that specific part of the trip and another video related to that part of the trip, go down and check the link below and also check out a link from some of the Big Adventures gear that supported these guys on the trip. This place is as high class as I've ever been to, especially in terms of like a fishing lodge. They really don't like you doing much work. I've been freaking out the hospitality host here because I've been like trying to clean the boats and stuff like that. But staff is super accommodating. Anything you need, they want you to, they want to help you out with. And uh, obviously the atmosphere is great. As you guys are seeing from these drone clips, this place is just, 
you couldn't ask for anything else. And you know, I used to see clips of this place as a kid. Um, used to see advertisements back like like 2000 and like seven of watching fishing TV shows. And to f the fact that I'm actually here now is very, very surreal. And I feel super blessed to be here. And I don't know what we're gonna catch tomorrow. You gotta work for your fish here. Like you have to work for your fish anywhere else. But the potential of the fish that you can catch here make it all worthwhile. Now, check it out. I was not required to talk about any of this in this video but I just found this place so dang interesting. The lodge first opened in 1963, and nowadays it supports over 120 employees, has a bakery, has a sawmill on site, processes all of its own water, and it's essentially a community that's completely secluded from the rest of developed Panama. Okay, we have course number one. What is this? It looks like it's a, salad. some type of salad. A lot of olives, tomatoes. That looks delicious. We have course number two, our soup. It's a pumpkin base. Wow. Wow. That's phenomenal. What do you think, Brent? That is absolutely delicious. Amazing. Yeah? Screw pumpkin pie. You need to have pumpkin soup. Yeah. So we have course number three, sesame crusted tuna. Look at the presentation on that. You wouldn't think that you're at a fishing lodge. You would think that you're just at a phenomenal restaurant eating something like this. The service is great. I have not needed a drop of wine at any second. Glass is always being filled. I don't know what else you could ask for. Why is it the kids are always last to the dock? <laughs> Good morning. We are ready to go. Getting the boat loaded up. We got our uh, mascot here, and today we're gonna do it. We're gonna catch something big. We're gonna get on some more fish. Yesterday was the grind, but I kind of like it when it starts out slow because you have to work for your fish. It makes it feel like, you know, it wasn't all given to you. It makes it feel like you actually had to do something to make that goal happen. So we're gonna keep loading up, and we're gonna get out to the fishing grounds. With a full live well and a few new lures, we were off to more promising fishing grounds. We also had Rex come fishing with us on this day to help just kind of tell the story and explain in further detail how they fish here at Tropic Star. Today we're gonna bridle the bait. And what bridling does, it basically just keeps the bait alive for longer. Rather than putting a hook through the head, which will kill them way faster. The goggle eye here, or through the top of the eyes, pull the thread through. Back through the thread, twist it up like that, through like that. Now you got all that hook ready to hook a big one. Then we want to get enough line out. What we're going to do, we're going to attach it to the downrigger. So what the downrigger does, gets the bait down low enough to where the fish are cruising down on the bottom. And then when a fish bites it, what it's going to do, it's going to break this little rubber band. Touch it like that. Go through, flip it on, and it's ready to go down. So now we ask the captain how deep we want the bait. Capitán, ¿cuánto pie de abajo? Veinte. Set it to zero on here. We're getting ready to drop it. Listo. We continued pushing down the coast and I hopped on the front to throw a couple lures, but it didn't take long for the live bait to get hit and Phil to hook up to something that he's never caught before. Fish on the live bait? All right, Phil, you're on. What do we got going on? We're hooked up on the Tiagra. Live bait. Could be an AP as well. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Big AP. Oh look, look, oh, another look, one with so it. Popular. Another one with it. All right, can pop it now. Good one. Look at this fish. Yeah, that's a beautiful. Fish. Woo! There we go. Yeah. 
That's Woo! awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, so we just, you saw us just put out that live bait on the downrigger. We were throwing poppers. That, that I caught one little jack on the popper, but then this beautiful African pompano smashed the live bait in the downrigger. Happy to have my first real fish in Panama, and uh, can't wait to get on something a lot bigger. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my God. So we just put out another live bait and the minute that it went out, literally a fish came up and just smoked it. I, I don't know if it's a jack or a rooster. I think it might be a jack, especially the, yeah, the way he stayed down. But it's cool, man. It's cool to have action, especially after, uh, after yesterday, we, we really worked for our fish, but very, very cool. Yeah, it looks like a pompano. It looks like another one. Yeah, later. Beauty, beauty, get up. Woo! <laughs> this was absolutely incredible fish, man. It's been over a year since I got to catch one of these. And I'll tell you what, I didn't expect to come to Panama and get to catch one like this. Um, these are probably one of my favorite fish to eat. They are absolutely delicious. Sashimi, you can do a bunch of different recipes of it, recipes with it, beautiful white flesh, and uh, just look at how incredible the coloration is on these fish. The blues and the silvers is unlike very many fish that I catch. When they're bigger, they or when they're smaller, they have these long tracers that come out here. So this, imagine this fin just extends all the way down. When they get to about to this size, they start to lose those longer tracers and they get to this. They max out probably around 35, 40 pounds. This one's, you know, maybe 10 pounds, but they're fast growing fish. They harvest the fast growing fish here in Panama. Wow, we're getting bit again. I'm gonna get this guy in the box and we're gonna catch another fish. Just pulled up to another spot, kind of doing the same thing. We're actually gonna do a, some offshore fishing this afternoon once we kind of get a call locating where the tuna are. But everyone, Rex has put out the goggle eye right now on the downrigger, just like we did before. We're trolling her along this coastline, and Phil and I are gonna be popping, hoping to raise a rooster fish, raise a blue trevally, something like that, maybe a cubera. We never know what's gonna be on these epic shorelines out here in Panama. Done there? Oh. <laughs> Phil, you better throw at these things. There's a giant school of jacks right out here. Captain's kind of pointing us towards them. They're just on top cruising. You guys probably can't see them yet, but uh, I got some drone shots playing actually of them. We found them earlier. See if they, uh, I think they're gonna hit the popper for sure. They're just <laughs> cruising on top. Probably like 150 of them. Oh! <laughs> really fast, really fast. Oh, that was sick. <laughs> oh. Come on up, buddy. That was so sick. Mm. I don't know if I foul hooked this fish or not. Yeah, definitely foul hooked. <laughs> I had one hook like right here and then one hook there and i was just cranking them sideways i was like i know this thing's not that big but it's uh it's crazy how hard they can or how much uh pressure it takes to get them up happy that we have these um you know these extra fish to keep us entertained while we chase the really really big ones Our captain got a call on the radio letting us know that there was a bunch of yellowfin tuna just offshore of us, so we decided to head out and fish for those. On the way out, I was kind of thinking back to my earlier trips this year with saltwater sportsmen, 
where I battled a monster big eye tuna on a popper. And just so you guys know, I wrote an article on this specific trip that you guys can check out in Saltwater Sportsman Magazine. It should be available in your local stores, or if you wanna check out a subscription, I have a link down below. Many of you may not know I'm a big fan of writing, and I think the article turned out great. So check it out. As we pulled up, we saw tons of dolphin, and we also saw tuna surfacing blowing up. We were super excited, and I wanted Phil to catch one real quick, so I picked up the camera, and Phil cast it out a little. Oh, there, man. Oh, 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 go! Woo! <laughs> Tuna time, baby! Let's go! Woohoo! Oh, man. Oh, up. That's my love language right there. <laughs> Tuna time, baby. Woo! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Woohoo! That's a good fish. Yeah, man, ripping. Yes! Lock it down. <laughs> oh, some head shakes. I think you got a better fish. Yeah, dude. I don't think this is no 25 pound fish. Greenin', you gotta love two now, man. When they go for their first run, all hell breaks loose, you know? You're just holding on for dear life, hoping you don't get a bolt hook or get popped off. We're fishing with pretty heavy tackle. This is fun. Got little sickles. Here we go. Yeah! Woo! There we go. That was a good on, one. Good one. That's your biggest tuna, isn't it? Yes, it is. Congratulations. Woo! All right, ready? Ready, so, coming in, watch your feet, watch the trap. What's up? Coming in the boat. Yeah. Good work, my yes. man. Good work. We're pulling up on him right now. Captain's got us in gear. Got it? Yep. Oh! oh! <laughs> All right, go to me now. <laughs> oh my God, this is epic. Wow, come out here. Literally a minute on the grounds and the fish are just losing their minds on the poppers really anything I think if you threw a cigarette butt and reeled it on top right now, they would eat it So cool man. So dang cool Woo! Woo Oh my god Woo -hoo -hoo! Let's go tuna fishing man nothing like it very few things get me excited like this, especially on pop water. They do this thing where they dive down, and obviously these fish aren't massive, but they still can rip. So sick. And it's very much welcomed after, you know, grinding for a day and a half, trying to pull, you know, cuberos and roosters off the rocks. Man, it's crazy. I'm looking at just fishes blowing up out there in front of me, too. They're just everywhere out here, man. You guys got to fish with Tropic Star if you want to just do epic tuna fishing. He's doing the thing called pinwheeling now, where he's straight up and down, just trying to sit sideways. Look at that guys, yellowfin on top water. Been here for like 15 minutes. We already got five in the boat, crazy out here. I don't know, I don't know how many we're gonna catch, but we're catching a bunch of them. This is epic. So we're pretty much just hauling butt from spot to spot because the tunas will pop up, blow up real quick and you gotta cast, 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 and then boom, they're gone, they're off to another area. So we just pulled up to another one. Let's see if Phil can hook up. Ah, in there. <laughs> Woo! You're good, you're good, you're good. Ah. 
Come on up, buddy. Oh, angry. Now, I don't think the footage will do it justice, but the next two hours were some of the most fun that I've had fishing in quite some time. I've condensed most of that to about a minute. Enjoy. Not every day you see stuff this epic. We got a giant mountain range behind us and then just tunas blowing up pretty much everywhere you look. It's just like, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words, honestly, and that doesn't happen very often. This is just a crazy fishery here in Panama. This amount of tuna is just blown up with all the birds and wildlife, a beautiful day. You can have all the tunas you want out here and <laughs> I just feel lucky to be here, man. Just very, very blessed. And it's crazy what can happen from, you know, filming some videos on the pier and the beaches back in the day, where it can lead you to and the things you get to see. With a boatload of tunas and about a half an hour left of fishing time, we headed inshore to see if we could catch a buzzer beater. Right, half an hour left. We're gonna put the blue runner down, see if we can get ourselves a Cubera. About to put 60 feet down, see if she'll get bit. We filleted a handful of the tunas already. I'm gonna fillet one for you guys and we're gonna make a little bit of sashimi. But uh, how's this for an epic location to be filleting some fish, man? It's beautiful out here. And we might hook a Cubera while I'm doing this, so stay tuned and make it real chaotic real fast. Today we're gonna be filleting it with the Danko um, Lunar 1 7 inch fillet knife. Swedish seal, that's the main difference between this and their other fillet knives. Stay sharper a little bit longer and it's nice and flexible. Big old hunk of tuna. It's not bad for flying on the boat when you just caught fish until it felt like your arms were gonna fall off. So take it out and I'll show you an easy way to skin. So just kind of pick like a general size. Boom, something like this. Bam. Like this. bloodline right here so I'll show you an easy way to get the skin off and remove the bloodline at the same time we're going to cut down towards the skin and then turn our knife angle it and we're gonna work our way parallel Bam. And then we have our tuna ready to go beautiful a little bit of bloodline left in there. I'm gonna leave it for now since we're gonna make this into fresh sashimi. So Arlette just made this sushi platter. Gracias, senor. Thank you, work. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, so we got tuna, and we got African pompano sashimi on the boat. Now check it out guys, we had two more days of fishing after this, and spoiler alert, the next day was absolutely epic. So I included one of the catches from the next day in this video, I hope you guys enjoy. We're hooked up on the live bait rod, the downrigger went off. Woo! Oh 
big, 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 heavy fish. Heck yeah. Hooked up. The live bait kind of took a break and Lures was out fishing it. Downrigger just went off. We hooked up. Feels like a little bit better of a fish. Good first pull. Now he's coming up a little bit. We'll see what we got. Never really know who's gonna eat these live baits. Woo, diving, 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 rip and drag. Yeah, maybe. Ripping down. See those big, big tail beats in the rod? Ripping some drag now. Woo hoo! Woo! Man, if when the fish pull pull drag on these big rods, you know that they're good fish. Come on up. Changing directions a lot. We're getting close. Yeah, I think you ripped out. Big angry fish, whatever we got, y'all. We got some color now. We're getting closer. Oh, he didn't like that. He ripped drag again. Coming up, leader. Very close. Big rooster. rooster. Holy cow. See, easy. Woo! Beautiful. Beautiful rooster. Tranquilo, buddy. Tranquilo. Yeah. Woo! Let's go. Woo -hoo -hoo. Gracias, senor. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, look at that guys, look at that epic rooster fish, wow, oh my gosh, wow, look at that rooster popping up, beautiful, Woo -hoo -hoo. so sick man, Woo. gotta come to Tropic Star Lodge if you want to catch great fish, and you got a fish with Capitan Luis, yeah. <laughs> Woo. beautiful, we gotta get a quick pick and get him back in the water. Filming? Yep. We need to make sure we get some good water. There's big, beautiful fish. Probably, you know, 25 pound class fish. Woo! Good job, thank yeah. you, man. Get this. Right. Gracias, like you, buddy. <laughs> Gracias. We gotta Ooh. get another big one. That's right. That footage probably speaks for itself. An absolutely epic day of fishing with an epic crew. And it's just, you know, I don't know what else you can ask for when you come to a place like this. You get to catch amazing fish, do amazing things, and just see sights that you never thought that you would actually get to see. Experience things you never thought you would get to experience. So. I think I'm gonna close this video out here, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Don't worry, this isn't the end of this trip. There's gonna be a whole nother video where we catch awesome fish coming up in just a couple weeks. So go ahead, check this video out for now, and if it's been a little bit, look for the other video. Probably more epic stuff happened. I'll see y'all over there.